Welcome to Lisa's Dog Agility Workshop, agility advice that creates success in every step of the journey. I'm your host, Lisa Seltover, and I'll be sharing decades of agility training, trialing, and judging experience today in Episode 8, What You Need to Fearlessly Tackle Teeter Movement. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm excited that you're here. So today I'm going to be talking about what you need to fearlessly tackle teeter movement. So in my previous video and blog post, uh, three ways to get your dog to love the teeter. One of the things that I talked about was movement. So now we're going to talk about the movement of the teeter separately and I'm going to share with you how I actually train that. So first of all, let me address kind of the first thing that people tend to do is they think straight to the teeter board and what they want to do is they want to teach the movement on the board or on the obstacle itself. And I'm going to tell you, I really, I, I highly suggest not doing that. So what I actually do is I train movement away from the obstacle itself. I, I don't want my dog to potentially have a bad experience and then now that could impact my teeter performance and now I have a whole bunch of other um, things that I have to work through. So I really take the movement part of the teeter and completely train that separately in preparation for the teeter. So here's why I really think that. I don't want to you know, combine a whole bunch of things and overwhelm my dog. So we think we know what our dog is experiencing when we put them on the teeter board, but the truth of the matter is there's a whole bunch of things that are going on. And even if we lower that board, which is what most people do, thinking that it minimalizes some of the experiences, negative experiences that the dog is having, it doesn't always help. First impressions are just so important. So basically, it's just asking the dog to handle too much at one time when you put them on the board. There's the sound, there's the size of the board, there's the fact that it's this tiny width. If you put it down, you may have some uprights that the dog has to go through. Um, it's actually potentially following some treats. You're trying to teach it to get its head down. There's just way too much going on and there's way too much that can go wrong. So like I said, please, I highly suggest take away the teeter obstacle and work on the movement part of it separately. Okay, so one more thing. If by some chance you're not convinced that, um, you know, you really think, hey, I think I can do this teeter movement thing, um, you know, when there's a full obstacle up, um, ever try walking across it? So when you've got that teeter board up, just literally walk across and I challenge you, uh, safely of course, please have something to hang on to, um, to really figure out how you're going to manage that teeter movement. Um, I've done that and I'll tell you, it's kind of a freaky little board. It is, uh, it, it's quite impressive that we can get our dogs to do what we do. So like I said, if by some chance you're, you're really tempted to just take my advice and, and just disregard that and ignore it, um, um, yeah, take across that, te you know, take a walk across that teeter board and see what you, uh, what you experience. I I'd love to hear what your thoughts were. All right. So training movement, how do I do that? So first and foremost, when you think about the teeter board, the movement is really, you know, it's a back and forth. It seems simple, um, but that's very deceptive. What I actually do when I train the teeter board is I want my dog to be comfortable with movement that goes in any direction. The goal is that I want to teach them to understand how they can adjust their body so that they can control the movement. I want my dog to feel confident and in control and be experienced on these things. So when I actually train movement, um, I use a circular item and I actually have have one. Okay. This is a, this is a great example. So what this is, um, it's actually this, it's, it's a disc. It's, it's kind of squishy. It moves. I've got one side that has a surface on it. Uh, I've got another side that's smooth. Um, this one is actually from Fit Paws. They're, they have quite a few products that I really like. And, um, 
what I like about this is I'll put this on the ground and as you can see, let me go this way, it really rotates circular, okay? That's what I want my dog to learn. I want my dog to learn circular movement. So I do start off with something like this that it it's really maybe three, four inches. Um, now I do have medium sized dogs for them. This is not a big deal. And I will actually teach them first on the front feet, then on the back feet, and then eventually I'll put two of these together and then two front feet are on one, the two rear feet are on another, and they have to kind of move that. They do make larger ones of these, and then they also do have like a peanut size, um, and you can get the peanut size so the dog has to stand on that as well. Um, I do have links on my website, and I'll go ahead and put the, uh, the link up here with some of the products that I use, but I 100% teach movement away from the board. And what I do is I do start off so that it's closer to the ground, very minimal movement. Um, I also do use a wooden wobble board. And again, I've got a link on my website so you can see a picture of what that looks like as well. And then I do start to move up in the height because I do want to get my dog up off the ground a bit, which is very similar to you know the teeter portion of it. And then I want them to get more motion going. Um, when my dog can do that motion away from the teeter, and then and they're quite confident with that, then later when I'm putting that board almost to the ground and really kind of controlling it, um, and I do add that back and forth motion, the back and forth motion is incredibly doable compared to how I've trained them. And um, there are other things that go into it. So I don't just teach the motion and then put my dog onto the actual teeter board. Don't forget, there are three parts to that teeter that I do train separately. And that is all listed in the three ways to get your dog to love the teeter. Um, and I do put a lot of time and effort into all three of those. All right, so again, think circular motion versus just the back and forth. Highly suggest taking away that movement, take it away from the teeter, teach them individually, separately, so that you're only dealing with one issue at a time, and in this case, the movement. Let me go ahead and put up. All right, so I started this whole teeter discussion, um, and if you go to spotonagility.com, teeter movement, you'll see the first post, and then there is also a link to the second post, what you need to fearlessly tackle teeter movement. In there, I do have links to some of the products that I do use to teach my dog movement. Um, I can't wait to hear how all of you are doing, and again, Give this a try, you know, have some fun with it. And the nice part is, especially when you're using, you know, uh, you're making it a positive experience for your dog, you really can't make mistakes. Just work in small parts, start close to the ground um, with minimal movement, and then start to work your way up in height as the dog gets more confident. All right, so as always, thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to any questions. You can contact me at lisa at spotonagility.com and happy handling.